This is your Estuary Report. I'm Jerry Kay. Around the San Francisco Bay Area, water bodies are abundant. Creeks, rivers, and of course, San Francisco Bay. And believe it or not, every one of them is considered polluted by pesticides under the Clean Water Act. In California, stormwater winds up in creeks, and creeks wind up in the bay. This bay, it's in all of our backyards. There are some pesticide runoff problems that arise from both pest control operators and homeowners using certain insecticides in and around their home. We've got this huge pathway from our homes, even from inside our homes. What we spray on the counter can go down the sink. Uh, scientists have found that some of these insecticides are actually causing issues at the bottom of the food chain. What we spray outside our homes gets washed off by the rain into the nearest storm drain. Storm drains just dump into a creek. They don't get cleaned up or treated or any of that. Pesticides are kind of like pharmaceuticals for the earth. Uh, you know, we use them uh, in an effort to control some sort of a problem, as you might use Advil to control your headache, and yet there are side effects and you just have to be aware of what those side effects are. And of course, you want to minimize them. You don't take too many Advil. You probably don't take Advil when you don't have a headache. Similarly, pesticides have these sort of environmental side effects. What generally happens is that somewhere along the line, rain or sprinkler water will land on that insecticide and wash it down into the storm water. And so you have an environmental effect it's probably nothing you ever imagined. So this is an example of some of the chemicals that we know are the worst for water quality. They're so toxic that they're um, at concentrations down to parts per million, parts per trillion, they'll kill off the whole bottom layers of the food web in our local creeks. And we've got a number of studies showing this. The worst class of chemicals these days for water quality are called pyrethroids. It's hard to remember the names, but the easy thing to look for is this active ingredients label on a can of pesticide product. The names on here will tell you exactly what's in there, and some of the worst ones to avoid, there's a shortcut. You just look for the last couple of letters on the end. If it ends in thrin, T-H-R-I-N, you want to avoid that stuff. You don't want those in your home. So we have all these ways that pesticides that we spray indoors and outdoors just get into the environment all around us. Which leads us to the topic of IPM, or Integrated Pest Management. Starts with the word integrated, which means you use a lot of different strategies and tactics. What it really means is green pest control. The idea that we're not using the traditional chemical methods of pest control, but going to a more precise, targeted method of using chemicals as a last resort if needed, and trying to focus on other methods to reduce pests. It's a set of decisions that individuals can make to um, create a pest management scenario that helps them control the pests with the least amount of environmental or health risk. IPM can be a real partnership that requires some active work from you as the resident. The first part of the process is maybe the most difficult one for most homeowners, and that is you don't really need to run and get the pesticide. The first step is to try to figure out what the problem is and why you have the problem. You've got to keep things a little bit cleaner, but there are also some good tools like baits. Baits are a different option from a spray. Instead of broadcasting chemicals all around your home and all around the outdoors where they can run off into storm drains, creeks in the bay, you can use these little targeted pinpoint applications of just a little bit of some chemical pesticide in a way that's much more precise. For a bait station, for example, you've probably seen them. They're little kind of cylinders. They've got a little access hole where the ants go in. They are very selective. They're very focused. And when the pest problem goes away, you can actually remove the baits. So the sort of environmental uh, uh, issues that you might see with sprays are very, very minimized. There are some great natural alternatives that work well, are cheap, and can actually be kind of pleasant to use. Something like a peppermint soap spray that you dilute with water, put in a spray bottle, you spray it on the ants, it takes care of them and actually leaves your home smelling great. When you talk to your regular pest control operator, you can ask them to provide a green service or a non-chemical service 
You can ask them, what chemicals are you using? Are you using a spray? We don't want you to spray here anymore. We want to shift to a bait method. We want to use a greener pest method that won't affect water quality. Just like homeowners, the owner of a business or apartment building has choices. One is that they can try to do it themselves. And uh, I think if the building is small enough that can work okay. Uh, they also many times will hire a pest control operator. And we urge them to take a look at EcoWise certified pest control operators because they will provide a service for them that we think is probably very beneficial for not only the collective environment but for their tenants. Tell your landlord that you don't want to pollute the bay. And you can actually save money by going to non-chemical pest control treatments. A lot of pest control treatments are scheduled on a quarterly schedule and people will come out and spray whether you have a pest problem or not. So when you shift to an IPM method, the cost can actually go down. So it's, uh, it's a mix of, of methods that you want to use, but all together you have this great feeling of knowing that you're not poisoning your house, you're not poisoning the outdoors, and we think that that's, that's worth it in the end. We have a number of resources for you. The University of California at Davis has an excellent website on integrated pest management. Check out the San Francisco Estuary Partnership flyer called Healthy Building, Healthy Bay. If you're looking for less toxic ways of dealing with pests, visit Our Water, Our World. And finally, this will be very helpful to public agencies and businesses. It's a one-stop toolkit focusing on how to develop an IPM program and contract for IPM services. We'll also post these links on the Estuary Report page at the San Francisco Estuary Partnership. Please visit sfestuary.org. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the Estuary Report podcast to make sure you receive them just as soon as they're published.